everybody, and welcome to our WrestleMania Night 2 preview show here at our local establishment. I am Bobby Munson, joined by an, a, a you know, distinguished panel of experts here with me. Uh, where are they? Where are they? <laughs> where are, are they? People? I can get well, off the screen if those people are here. <laughs> well, we'll get to the first time, uh, but, but let's go to uh, Ed Fries. How are you doing this morning? You, you look a little tired there, my friend. It's been a long weekend. I've done way too much talking, but I'm here because it's Mania Weekend, and you just do what you got to do. Do that. And uh, right beside you there from Spoiler Warning, Tom Collihue. Thank you for joining. How are you doing? Uh, doing good. Happy to be here. Um, un unlike Ed, I seem to want to be here. Who seems to want to take a big, long nap, Ed? Take a big, long nap. Do you, do you need tucking in? Do you need your teddy bear? It's WrestleMania. That it's WrestleMania. How are you not carrying the hype? This is going to be a fun show. And right up of that, you know, for Mark Talks Wrestling, as well as here at our local establishment. Mark, how are you doing this morning? Or Apart afternoon? from seeing the absolute travesty that was WWE making Gunther lose, I got to saw the final boss destroy uh, Mama Rhodes and those Cody crybabies. So seeing that made me feel very happy after going through the Ring General losing, which I had a full-on meltdown. But I am so excited for night two and ready to get into this. All right. We will very shortly, as we say good morning as well to Noob and Cove. Thank you for joining in. As well as Brian Carter, who says good morning. If Bob Smokes was going to give WWE a chance, I thought I would too. And I watched WrestleMania night one. Did oh. you survive it, Brian? What did you think? Let us know in the comment section. But uh, yes, we could uh, go on forever. But if anyone wants to know the thoughts on WrestleMania night one, catch the replay here at our YouTube channel. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe on all our channels. Thank you for joining in. And let's get right down to business, gentlemen. Tonight, WrestleMania night two in six-man tag action. There it is up on your screen. We got Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain taking on Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. I'm uh, going to start with you, Mark. Thoughts on this particular matchup? This is Karrion Cross's time to prove a point. He's had numerous opportunities and nothing has stuck. This is his chance, whether win or lose, is his time to shine that he deserves to be in this spot. Now, the build to it has been interesting. It has, hasn't really stuck with myself. But Bobby Lashley getting a WrestleMania match after like, last year not getting one um, is something that he deserves. But also at the same time, the Bobby Lashley function isn't really sticking with me either. It, they just seem, Montez Ford just seems to be, they all seem to be doing the Street Profits gimmick with a little bit of ruthlessness to it, just with Bobby Lashley there. There's not an edge to them that brings me to think about it. But in the end, I think this could be a fun match, as is a street fight. Um, you never know what could happen, what's going to happen. So for me, it's very much, I'm just looking forward to it. I'm just hoping it's fun and violent. That's it. Fun and violent. That's the name of the game right there. Uh, going over to you, Tom, your thoughts on this matchup. Glad to see Karrion Cross getting an opportunity. They are finally starting to give him the push that I feel he's been earning over the last few weeks. AOP are back and AOP are exciting. They're fresh. They're new, even though we have seen them before in NXT and briefly on the main roster. I like the new version of the Street Profits, even though they did pull back from the heel turn. And I do think everyone involved looks damn good in a suit. That's more than enough reason for me to watch this match. From where I'm sitting, I don't really care who wins because Street Fight, Tornado Tag, with these six men, is going to be amazing. Personally, I've got to go carrying cross. I do feel Bobby Lashley will be heated up back towards something, but I know his contract doesn't have too long left, and carrying cross is believed to be the future, as it were. Yeah. Uh, Ed, your thoughts? I agree with these guys. I think this could be fun. I'm excited to see what carrying cross does when he's let go and just, you know, allowed to do his thing. My bigger question is around Montez Ford in this. When can we get the solo push of Montez Ford? When can Angelo Dawkins have a small injury that keeps him out for five or six months so that they force to push Montez Ford as a single star? Because I still want world champion Montez Ford. He's still charismatic enough. He's still good enough. He's still young enough. I want the Ford singles push. And if that means we have to lose Angelo Dawkins for a little while, I'm okay with it. So, I'm not wishing him to get hurt. 
I'm just saying he can miss a couple months. It'd be great. Can I just jump in on that one? Oh, yes, please do. Angelo Dawkins has stepped up massively in the last few months. I'm really excited to see his personal development. Yes, Montez Ford historically is the one that everyone roots for, but I see the Usos in the Street Profits, and I do feel if they do break up, they'll miss each other horribly. Very good. Yeah. And of course, uh, now that Ed has wished uh, all sorts of pain and violence upon Angelo Dawkins here tonight, uh, I'll just finalize what you guys said. I, I really agree. I think that Karrion Cross, the authors of pain, need this win more than the other side needs us at the moment. The push needs to happen for them, and I'd like to see where it goes from there. There we go. Just like that one down. Five more to go. We got the U.S. Championship on the line as Kevin Owens and Randy Orton both going to look to coincide going up against Logan Paul. Ed, I'm going to go to you first on this one. Thoughts on this matchup? I love this matchup. I think the build here has been really fun. I I don't wish this was LA Knight. Like a lot of, I know a lot of people have been like, I wish this was LA Knight in one of these spots. I don't. I kind of like the idea that LA Knight's not in here and he's got his own singles match coming up for this. Is it wrong that I still kind of want Logan Paul to win this, especially after Grayson Waller and uh, um, Austin Theory won the tag titles last night? I really, really kind of just want to see Logan Paul win again and just have the three of them douchebags running around with championships. <laughs> it's a fair assessment. Uh, before we go any further with that, good morning to Ophelia joining us there and says, look at all the diversity on her screen. No hate. Ed just made the joke last night. So. <laughs> Taking digs in Ed all day long. It's what it's about on WrestleMania weekend. I, I, I was going to say, I have made the joke all weekend that when I'm doing the thing, and I'm like, oh, look, the diversity. Four white men on a screen. Oh, no. <laughs> and here we are. And here we are. In our, in, 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 but I, I always do preface that also afterward with, in our defense, this is the only real show of the weekend where it's a bunch of guys on the TV screen. We've had the natural on most of the weekend. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Stephanie Hardy on later tonight. We have Auntie Collins on later this afternoon for the Honor Ramble. We do love to give diversity to a multitude of great people. Yeah, it just yeah. happens that this one show isn't that show this weekend. <laughs> you also had Amanda Savage on yesterday as well, too. And I don't know if you get that. Yeah, and Mel Ball <laughs> was uh, on with myself and Andre yesterday for the TJPW watch along. So, yeah. Lots has been happening. And Brian is saying, I know this is a previous show, but can we acknowledge that Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair are absolute badasses? Yes, we can. And I feel he's saying eight town down and Logan Paul would be absolutely ag aggressively arrogant. And I am here for that. I'm going to go to you, Tom, your thoughts on the US title match. Well, it's a difficult one. I mean, it's not what I expected to see. I originally expected we were going to see Logan Paul at LA Knight. There were rumors of that. Then it looked like we were going straight to Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens in a rematch. Now Randy Orton's involved. There's a lot of different parts here, and Kevin Owens is vital to this. Logan Paul style and the Randy Orton style don't really gel together, so I'm not entirely sure how it's going to play. A triple threat from WWE is typical. One person gets thrown out, the other two wrestle for a little bit. Kevin Owens is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting. He literally has no choice here. I'm not too excited for the match, but I could be pleasantly surprised. I have Randy Orton winning this, and I don't think it's a popular pick, but I do think he's the one who would carry the championship forward and really raise the profile a little further. Logan Paul, I don't feel, has really done that. Fair assessment, fair assessment. Good morning to Mick Wigan joining us saying, hey, up, lads, I only got one wrong yesterday. He picked Santos and Dom for the win. How do you lot do? I think I would probably would have been around the same point. I kind of had Santos and Dom on that one as well, too. I think the rest of them pretty much were on point with what I thought. How about you guys? You, 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 you <laughs> oh, no, wait. Sorry. No, no. Screw that. I was no, like, wait. Was, you saw the final title. Being dethroned? We're, 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 we're trying to ignore that there was an Intercontinental title match altogether. No, that was a great match. Just I, unpredictable. No, we're not. Only one we're of not, us. We're not do doing that. that. No. <laughs> the edgy one is doing that. Look, look, at, look at the edginess. Look how edgy he is. It's no, our I tutorial boss. It's our I'm tutorial boss. So, so bitter and angry still. I, hey, Mark, I what do you think of the U.S. title? But go on about the IC title quickly first. <laughs> oh, I hate every single inch of that match. Not that it wasn't a great match last night. It was just the ending. No, How no, can... Wrong match. Wrong match. Someone... U.S. title. U.S. title. Yeah, no, I'm getting my feelings he out. He about the IC. He hated oh, every yeah. inch of it, except only the ending. <laughs> yes. 
you know when I start ranting, Tom, that it goes all different directions. You should know this by now. But anyway, back to the IC uh, the US title. Let's get to that. I do feel sorry for Logan Paul in this, that one, he has to wrestle with Philadelphia, and two, he has to be a part of a match where all those people are not going to appreciate just how great the Maverick really is. Um, and also, I'm going to predict that who I want to win and who I think are going to win are two different things. Who I want to win is Logan Paul, who I think is going to win. I think I'm going with Tom with this, and I think it's going to be Randy Orton. Because I just feel like WWE will do this thing now where Randy Orton will be on telly every week and they he will be they will be able to put Randy Orton in a ring with up and coming stars or people that haven't got shots or opportunities for a little while, and you put him in there with Randy Orton and he will uh, bring them to his level type thing. Um and bring them up. That's how I think it's gonna go. But I do wanna say I really do hope Logan Paul wins because I think he's been brilliant as United States champion and what he's done with, with, with that title. He may not be on it all the time, but the exposure and everything else he does with it, he's done brilliantly. Interesting take. I'm going to play devil advocate and say that I think Logan Paul is going to hold on to it one more time. I think he's going to carry it maybe as far as being able to walk out with it during his brother's fight with Mike Tyson, which will be live on Netflix in that you know, they're leaning towards that Netflix stuff. We saw advertising for Netflix movies and shows during the broadcast last night. I really think that they would love the opportunity for Logan to walk out into his brother's corner holding the U.S. title that night. I think you could also strip that a little bit further and say, and say he could walk out with the title at SummerSlam because he's in Cleveland, if I'm right. And that's the hometown of Logan uh, with of, of all the pools. And that is what he said he wants to have all of the pools there for that match so maybe if if he does retain SummerSlam might be the time um but I think I there's just... room for that yeah I would lean towards SummerSlam as well if Logan Paul does mm. retain the betting averages do suggest that Logan Paul will be the one winning he's not necessarily my pick but I do think they want to get back to LA Knight at some point and even though he's facing AJ Styles that doesn't for me fit the high profile they want to put on him that said I think you're both right. If you want to extend it a little further, you can. You could go all the way to WrestleMania 50, where it's going to be like 10 years and a big anniversary. <laughs> that makes perfect sense as well. You can go really far with this. I mean, how they've done it for Roman. Why can't we do it for Logan Paul? He's just they, good, they right? have done it for Roman, yes. <laughs> how many times have we been sat here and go, all right, Roman's had enough. But, you know, if they, if they keep it on him another couple months, he's going to pass this milestone. Didn't we say that when he was passing 1,000 days? Yep. Like, it was the first, it was the punk rain. He, pa he mm -hmm. passed the punk yes. rain. Yep. And then it's mm -hmm. the 1,000 days. And it just every time is, but if you keep going just a little bit further. And that's true isn't... because he's nearly reached four years as champion, which you've got to, you've got to do, right? You've got to. I mean, you've done three. You might as well do four, yeah. right? And he might as well do roll. five or six while you're at it. But isn't it's, SummerSlam the time when he's meant to be beating Hogan's record for the longest reign on, on uh, with a title? I think it's isn't just it after the SummerSlam, if I remember yeah. correctly. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I, I'd have to look, but SummerSlam's yeah. early this year, so I believe so. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Philia wants KO to win because of the Sammy KO bromance. No, oh, we're not talking about Sami Zayn. Get him. <laughs> that would be beautiful. Let's all talk about Sami Zayn, Intercontinental Champion. Can you imagine it? It would it would be the two of them out there hugging with their titles, oh, brothers in arms that just won belts, all for you, Mark. All, all for, for you. you. What you need, Mark, is more images of two dudes hugging with big belts. <laughs> I would Megan's rather watch. Just... I would rather Meg... watch big meaty men slapping meat than than to have that image. I mean, I that's the same thing. It's the same thing, mate. No, because Sammy <laughs> says not a big. You never had one of those hugs where it just feels like everything's slapping together, <laughs> mate. You've not lived. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me. I do apologize. <laughs> I, I haven't slept enough, and I'm manic. This is fantastic. The unleashed Tom is here. Yeah. All right. Next match on our list happens to feature one of the guys we thought would be in that U.S. title picture. We're talking about L.A. Knight. Yeah. Versus AJ Styles. Uh, I'm going to go over to Tom first on this one. Thoughts on this matchup? So it's a difficult one to read out. They tend to keep um, AJ Styles at a point where they can reheat him really quickly if they need to. 
I just unfortunately really don't think AJ Styles has been a big deal for a very long time. LA Knight's been a pet project of Triple H, so I can see LA Knight winning, but I'm really concerned about this match. I'm about as concerned with this one as I was with Jay and Jimmy. Jay and Jimmy was that they... I didn't feel they could really tell the story. It was too long. Their offense was too similar. And I didn't love that match. This one, I just feel that the AJ Styles system is very high tempo, very high flying. The LA Knight system is very slow and methodical, very Randy Orton. I don't think it's going to gel. I'm not loving this as an idea. I'd rather just get through it and get out the other side. Fair assessment. Mark, your thoughts? See, I didn't really think of it at, at that point. Uh, the way that Tom looked here, I look at this as this has to be as much as I love AJ Styles. I love him. He's he was one of the first people I really watched outside of WWE back in the day in when it TNA. Um, and but LA Knight needs to tonight prove whether he's world champion caliber or he'll never get there. This is this this is his main shot. Because on the mic, unless he's swallowing chewing gum that he's not meant to, he is brilliant at doing it. I don't know if you saw SmackDown when he started talking and then he nearly choked on the chewing gum that he actually had in his mouth, um, where he is very, very good at, on the mic. Probably one of the best you can say around these days. In the ring, there's still the large, for me, and I love LA Knight, that can he do it? with anyone and AJ Styles is the I think this is very clever by Triple H can he go in this ring with AJ Styles tonight and put on a banger because if he can do it with AJ Styles because AJ Styles could do it with anyone he could do it with anyone I'm going with LA Knight to win this I think he's going to win this I think Tom was right with this is Triple H's project with, with what he wants to do next I really want LA Knight to shine. I want to see a different level, another notch to LA Knight's in in ring ability for me tonight. Perfect. Ed, your thoughts? Um, I mean, I've I've loved AJ Styles for a while. I mean, everybody has who's seen any of his work in TNA. But at the same time, it's AJ's coming AJ's coming to the end of his line and, you know, he even mentioned it this week when doing media for this thing that, you know, he can see the end of the road when it comes to his wrestling career. LA Knight's got a couple years left. I think he can eat a big loss at a big show and be okay, especially if it's to a star like AJ Styles. So I say, why not go with AJ? Give AJ the opportunity. Plus, if the story is to be finished, we're going to need somebody on SmackDown to feud against. AJ would be a fun first feud for Cody Rhodes if he were to finish the story. If if Cody doesn't finish the story, well then he can do the tribal chief thing because they've been they've been teasing that match since fucking AJ came back, and we still haven't got it. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean you, the the clash and styles. I I understand that. Uh, I do feel confident that AJ Styles still even at his age carries a match very very well and can carry opponents very very well. I think that. LA Knight, uh, all the credit in the world to him, not only getting over on the microphone, but he can get in there and work as well, too, and work along with an opponent that works as easily as AJ Styles. I think this match can be a lot better than maybe people are anticipating it to be. I do foresee LA Knight picking up the victory. I think that they're going to go forward with that. Uh, AJ, I believe AJ is the kind of guy, and I don't know him personally, but I think he's okay with putting over other people for the better good of the company. And I think that's how he we're going to see his career end out, is him putting over up-and-coming stars. Not to say that LA Knight is the young up-and-coming star, but he's kind of the star on the rise at the moment, and I think that AJ foresees that, and he's going to give the opportunity for LA Knight to go over big here today. Before we continue, can I just jump in and reference what Ed was saying there about AJ yeah. Styles looking to end it? Uh, end it is a wrong phrase, I do apologize. Looking to wrap up his career. So AJ Styles, around the time that he signed his latest contract, was open in interviews saying that he was looking for this to be his last big one. Uh, this could potentially mean a smaller contract, a couple of years in AEW, a couple of years back at TNA if he feels the need to help them, which he might, and a couple of years in Japan. They're all options that he could take. AJ Styles does miss the G1, as, as many wrestlers do who've wrestled in it. He is looking to, to wrap it up within the next couple of years in the WWE. He's made his money. He's confident at this point that he can't add much more 
that he's already added. That's at least what's been said in interviews by him. I think it's a a very mature mindset, which you don't actually get with a lot of wrestlers. Look at The Undertaker, for example. He just could not stop. So I really have a lot of respect for AJ Styles for his position on this. Yeah. Do you think as well, this is another question I want to follow up on that. Do you think he would be good suited if they did it to keep him in NXT behind the scenes to help with the up and coming or as a producer? Is that something he would be interested in doing or is it just something that is not what he wants? I think he'd be very good at it. He mm -hmm. is, in many ways, one of the reasons I'm a big fan. He is a merger of Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. He wrestles like Shawn Michaels. He plans like Bret Hart. You can see the phases laid out in his matches, and it's one of the reasons he's done so well for so long. That side of him, the Bret Hart side, would love to be a producer. I personally think he will walk away to a different company anyway, wrestle sporadically at best on a limited day contract just to help other people out. I don't think production would be in his personal interests, but it depends. If it's close to home, it could certainly happen. Orlando's not too, too far from uh, Orlando. Georgia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's from Atlanta, right? He's he's living currently oh, in Atlanta. Oh, sorry. I heard Orlando's not too far from Orlando. Yeah, that's what oh, I no. heard. I, I said Atlanta's not too far from Orlando. Gotcha. Thank you. Sorry. Before we go into our next match, uh, we have some statistics that have been looked up. To beat Hogan, uh, Hulk Hogan's record, Roman needs to stay champion past September 13th. So that's after SummerSlam, August the 3rd, and Bash in Berlin on August the 31st. So it's still a long road to climb for the Tribal Chief if he is to Only a few more months. Record. Just go ahead and do it. It's fine. Yeah, Only a few more well. months and, and then a few more years for the next one. And then a few more years for the next one. It's all doable. Exactly. I mean, they made us wait this long. I mean, what's a few hundred more years? They ago? really did, yeah. <laughs> All right, titles are on the line, gentlemen. We've got the WWE World Heavyweight Championship on the line when Seth Rollins defends against Drew McIntyre. Mark, my friend, I'm going over to you this time. I'm looking forward to this one because of how it finished last night and the, how much I didn't think... Okay. There's a lot of words coming out and not it's not jumbling in my brain in the correct way that I want it to. For me, last night, I didn't think it would be as violent as I as it was. I thought it would be a normal-ish tag. There'd be some going out to the crowd and the rock telling the ref to fuck off or I'll fire you. That was that was that you knew that was coming because you knew that at some point he was going to use the power that he's got to do it. But I didn't expect the tables, the barricades, uh, all the other things, the ramps and all of that stuff to happen. But the, the one telling point last night that I thought was very key, and I don't know um, if it was picked up, was when Seth was trying to get back into the ring and Roman Reigns targeted that knee as he was going in and he fell down and landed on the knee and couldn't. And then from then on, he didn't really walk normally and I think that's going to be a big play and I don't think either of these people um, exactly um, I don't know I don't think either of these walk out as world champion I think there's a certain judgment day member senior money in the bank who I think I think Drew wins Damien cashes in that's how I think it's going to happen I want to step on on that one quickly. I do agree with you that Damien's cashing in, but seeing as it is 10 years since the Seth Rollins got the heist of the century, I mm -hmm. think Damien Priest cashes in during the match, making it a triple threat, taking the belt out from both competitors tonight. Can I just say as well, while this you were talking, you just look at Tom's face while you were talking. And that, that gave me all the signs now of, <laughs> of what of it. So I'm staying with Damian Priest and ignore my last sentence. All right. Well, uh, because of all those looks, uh, Tom, your thoughts on this matchup? The story is pretty clear. Seth Rollins is banged up. He's beat up. He made a mistake in taking his eye off Drew McIntyre. But that's not the whole story. Because while he's been taking his eyes off Drew McIntyre, everyone's been taking their eyes off Damian Priest. And it's been an attempt to lull you into a false sense of security. Before someone catches in a Money in the Bank contract, they vanish. That's historical. They vanish and they lose. We saw Damian Priest lose two championships last night. 
We saw Judgment Day come this close to splintering and falling apart. And in the days to come, we will see more of that. Even Dominic Mysterio had a bad night because of that cheating Ray. Anyway, <laughs> when it comes to this match, Drew McIntyre has a chip on his shoulder. He's not happy about being screwed over by the bloodline. The bloodline are not the only people who can screw him over. He needs to be screwed over by more. There needs to be more screwing of Drew Mac. There needs to be more screwing over of Drew McIntyre. And with that in mind, I do feel, as you guys know I've said, you've popped into spoiler warning, I've been saying it for weeks, the heist of the century against Mr. Heist of the Century is one of the best storytelling segments you can possibly get. I'm very interested, very interested to see whether this match does open the show, as certainly has popped up as an idea elsewhere. Because if it does, we're starting real hot. And we are starting with a demolished Seth Rollins, who certainly then will not be able to help in the main event. And a Drew McIntyre, who is on the warpath. Perfect. Ed, your thoughts on this one? I need to see the most angry Drew McIntyre possible. I think he is so much fun when he's full of piss and vinegar and just... Mm -hmm. What better way to do that than to have him screwed out of this world championship opportunity at WrestleMania in front of fans again? Yep. The one thing this poor man wants and deserves is to have a world championship win in front of fans. What better way to screw that up than have Damian Priest cash in as he's doing one, two, three to do the kick. And all of a sudden, Damian Priest comes running down, grabs him, chucks him out of the ring, and pins Seth Rollins. Yep. I just think there's so much good stuff that can come of this. It's going to make Tony from Get the Tables cry because he yelled at us all last night during the post-show about even suggesting that Drew McIntyre not get this championship uh, tonight. I really want it to happen. I just, I want to see, even if for 24 hours, I want to see what Damian Priest looks like with a world championship around his waist. Yes. I think he's deserved it. I think he's earned it. He's had to work with Finn Balor and, J and J.D. McDonough. I mean, come on. He deserves hazard pay for having to deal with J.D. McDonough for this long. <laughs> You didn't even mention Dominic, who clearly is the worst of all of them. He is the <laughs> WWE 2023 Wrestler of the Year, as, as listed by our local establishment. Absolutely. I mean, he's been head at our establishment, local establishment, but, you know. Absolutely he is, and he's still one of the most detestable people. And I know that you love him for that. Everyone loves a detestable heel. That's why you love Jay White. That makes sense to me that you'd love Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> You know it's one year since this whole Jay White bullshit started last year. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah. That, that, that's kind of... You made this happen. Ed. I still hate Jay White. I Ed. almost turned off Ring of Honor the other night Ed. when he showed up. Ed. Happy anniversary, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Um, so, Yeah. <laughs> This is going to be interesting. It's going to be, yeah, I think we're all kind of on board that there is going to be a cash in no matter what. So we'll wait and see how that goes. Uh, the going on from there, we got another title on the line. We got EOS Guy defending against uh, Bailey, the Royal Rumble women's Royal Rumble winner. Going to go over to Ed first on this one. Near thoughts on this. Who's going to pick up the victory? Or Bailey. Like, can we just say that Bailey had to win the Rumble in the worst possible year? of ever in our Lord, right? Like this poor girl wins the Royal Rumble and gets everything stomped over by Cody Rhodes's story and raw rock coming back. Like I literally, I do believe had it not been for the rock coming back, she might have actually had an opportunity. She still probably wouldn't have main evented, but she might've at least been closer in the discussion to main event night one of WrestleMania. I really do believe that that's a possibility that could have happened. As soon as The Rock walked back onto our television screens, that possibility went out the fucking window. And yes, no, yes, I'm acknowledging my boss. final boss. I'm acknowledging my final boss. Well, you are the tutorial boss, so that does make sense. Anyway, um, it's just I feel so bad for her because she's finally won the Rumble. And, and she has this great story with Eos Guy. 
And it's just so far down the card. Like, I feel so bad for her. They have to give her the championship after everything they've done with her for against her in the in the build to this card. She wasn't at the WrestleMania press conference. She wasn't at. I don't even think she was at the press conference in Australia. Like this poor girl needs so much love from this company. If they don't put the title on her, it's going to be a damn shame. However, the match will be really good no matter what happens. Fair enough. Mark, your thoughts. We were having this conversation about NXT superstars going from baby faces to heel and how women in NXT are not doing it very well, apart from a handful of superstars that have done. We were having this conversation, but Bailey has found the art of going from baby face to heel to back to baby face. And she's done it so brilliantly that I think she gets. And I still don't understand how she's underlooked as one of the best in the four horsewomen. I think personally, in myself, I've always said up until maybe a year ago that Charlotte Flair was the best one out of all four. But now, Bailey for me is by far the best one out of the four horsewomen. Because not only is she great in that ring, she puts over talent, she then can find a way of going from feel, uh, to heel to babyface. The, the build-up on TV has not been good for her, and I feel bad for her on that. But she did a promo package. I don't know whether it was on Twitter or somewhere, where it was three or four minutes long, and I watched it, and I loved every every second of it. I think Bailey deserves this win. I think she deserves a long title reign as well, and I do hope that she gets the win that she deserves and the publicity afterwards for what she does. Fair enough. Dom, your thoughts? This one has me nervous because the moving parts happen after the match, and I need to explain that a bit further. Mm -hmm. There are times before now, I think most infamously, when Bray Wyatt won the Universal Championship from Seth Rollins in Saudi Arabia. There are times when an incoming draft has decided who left a big show as champions. There was no indication, there was no reasoning beyond, oh, next month they're not going to be on that show, they need to make a change. Triple H has now confirmed that a draft is incoming, and this means that Damage Control and Bailey could be split away from each other. Now, this has potential to be a good thing. If Bailey picks up the win, she won't have Damage Control snapping at her heels, but that also means the automatic good stories involving Kairi Sane, involving Asuka, involving Dakota Kai can't then happen. We would instead have options like Liv Morgan versus Bailey, which I'd be fine with, but there are automatic stories there with a long-term build that would have very satisfying payoffs. It's a difficult one to play because while I do think, logically, Bailey should be winning this, a lot of it also comes down to what happens almost immediately afterwards, Cody versus Roman. I think what we're about to encounter on night two of WrestleMania is going to be a series of incredibly depressing moments which essentially build up to, oh, Cody can't possibly win. Why am I even here? I think that would be hilarious. But at the same time, I'm not really infused by the idea of that happened with Bailey and EO Sky. I want Bailey to win. I hope Bailey wins. I am predicting Bailey wins. But this one has me nervous because of all the moving parts that happen afterwards. That is a very, very strong assessment, Ed. I know where you're going with that, too. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I think even if Bailey does win, I don't think Bailey's a long-term champion this time around. I don't think this is going to be on her for very long. I think it's going to be transitional more than anything to get through the roster split, decide what the plan of attack is, and then line up who it's going to be next. I'm not saying I know who it's going to be next. I just have a feeling that this is not going to be a six-month to eight-month championship run for Bailey at all. This is voluntarily for the moment. She won the Royal Rumble. She's going to get her moment at WrestleMania. Enough said about her career because she's done it all. And this is the last opportunity to do that one last thing that she needs to do. And then move on from there. Uh, start building the stars of tomorrow. Now, yeah, you say what? there's a lot of moving parts with the main event. And we will talk about that in just a moment. In fact, how about we make that moment right now? Main before event time, go, boys. Before, before we go into that, when's Money in the Bank? July? Uh, May. Is it? 
May. May? It's okay. May in Toronto, if I remember correctly. So oh. is the draft going to happen before Money in the Bank or after? Before. Oh, okay. Don't worry about what I was thinking then. I was thinking <laughs> if right. Bailey was holding I'm wrong. The I'm wrong. It was. You were right. It is July. July 6th. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. Carry on. I was thinking if it was Money in the Bank next or soon, Bailey could hold that title to Money in the Bank, then the draft happens to whoever cashes in on her and wins it. July 6th. Okay, cool. Perfect. Thank you. I do have a question about the draft before we do move to the main event. Uh, Tom, do you have any indications as to... Because obviously Fox has very little left in stakes in the draft. Is it going to be executives from Netflix trying to gauge the interest for who they want on Raw in January? Or is it going to be WWE kind of trying to make sure that they shuffle the deck with Peacock, with NBC Universal kind of making their things known and making sure they get enough stars to keep Netflix happy. It isn't really Netflix that's the focus from WWE because their main concern is a continentalization and they're actually not too concerned about focusing in the US where it's only raw on Netflix. They're happy to spread them out knowing that all of their stars will be seen on Netflix globally rather than just focused in the US. Their efforts for the next few years are not based on home, they're based on away. And because of that, it'll be quite an even spread I could see Roman moving, for example, to Raw, but I see Gunter being the trade for him. Good to know. Very good to know. All right. Well, with that said, now it's main event time, guys. And we know now that this is under tribal rules, I believe is what it's called. Tribal Blood rules. Line rules. rules. Blood line rules. So, uh, start with you, Ed. Uh, your thoughts on this one. Who's picking up the victory? How's this going to pan out? Who the is fuck gonna, is knows? it going to take an hour and a half to get there like last night? Yeah. Yes, yes. That that part, the only thing I know is it's going to take forever <sighs> to get there. I conservatively, there was a there was a Discord form like predictions thing that Auntie Collins did uh within the community. And um I conservatively thought I was doing a really good job by predicting that the, the main event matches last night would last 29 and 35 minutes for tonight. <laughs> the match went like 40 minutes last night, and I'm like, oh no, I vastly underestimated how long these people are going to be in this wrestling. I'm like, Roman Reigns and Rock are in this match. There's no way they're going 40 minutes. Rock hasn't wrestled in 10 years almost. There's no way he goes 40 minutes. He wouldn't. It's a tag match. Yeah, but then that means that Roman Reigns has to wrestle for nearly 40 minutes, and that man doesn't do Which that. Which he does all the time. No, he lays down and lays around for 30 minutes on the, the ground while he... The other guy lays down and lays around for 30 minutes. Roman stands there going... <laughs> oh, I just... I wanted I wanted so badly to not have to have John Cena and Stone Cold Steve Austin and Legends Galore. And I think you can still get around not having Stone Cold Steve Austin here. Although it makes a lot of sense with The Rock to have Stone Cold show up. But I want to see this as the locker room taking this away from Roman Reigns. I want to see the bloodline coming out in full force and just beating down Cody for five, ten minutes. And all of a sudden the locker room says enough's enough. And out comes Seth and he gets beat down. And out comes the intercontinental champion Sami Zayn. And he gets beat down. And out comes Kevin Owens, and he gets beat down. And I want to see every list of guys that Roman Reigns has defeated on the path to 1,300 days as world's as undisputed Universal champ, WWE champion come out there and try to take this away from Roman Reigns. And then that's when the glass shatters. That's when the trumpets horn and out come Cena and Austin. And they're the ones who touch nobody other than Solo Sokoa and The Rock. They get those two away because those two things make sense. The Rock and Stone Cold going at it one more time makes sense. And John Cena and Solo Sokoa makes sense. Because the only way you can really involve these two guys and not have it feel like something silly is to make it make sense. And these are guys that Cody Rhodes would know. These are guys that Cody Rhodes could call for help. And I think that's what we need to do. 
We need to limit this to people who Cody Rhodes would theoretically call for help, with the exception of Dustin, because Dustin, actually, there's no chance in hell after what's happened this week and the fact that we're seeing the footage from London next week on Dynamite, apparently, that we're getting any involvement from Dustin Rhodes. Unless he wants to get fired. Maybe he does. Tom, any insight on that? And how your thoughts on this match? I'll focus on the thoughts on the match, if, if you'll forgive me for that one. No problem. Um, so I definitely saw Bloodline rules coming. I think this is going to be a mess in all the right ways. I think this is going to be incredibly overbooked. I think there's going to be far too many bodies. And I think it's going to be worth it. We know The Rock's going to be heavily involved in all of it. I don't expect Seth Rollins to be too available, largely because of Drew McIntyre. But this is a huge opportunity for a match that ends with, oh, there's Seth Rollins. Oh, there's Drew McIntyre. Oh, there's Jay. Oh, there's Jimmy. And you start to balance it out, just as you say. Oh, there's John Cena, but here's Solo Sokoa. You do start to balance those figures out. There are plenty of people who could be involved. And I do think that's the right move. I do think this is an opportunity to say to the entire locker room and to the entire company and to the entire world, we're done with this. We're done with all of this in a way that protects Roman Reigns because he can say, yeah, hundreds of people stopped me from winning this championship. I mean, given what Roman is, that makes sense to me. I could definitely see that happening. It also means then we can end with the WrestleMania 10 moment of Cody on everybody's shoulders being paraded around like the, the prize at the fair, that sort of thing. I think that's the moment that we get. I think we still have the moment between The Rock and Roman building towards that. I just, it's going to be a mess, but it's going to be a fun mess. And if you can't do that at WrestleMania, when can you? Fair enough. Mark, your thoughts? I don't know if I can really add anything to what Ed and Thomas said. They both said exactly what I've been thinking. I'm, I was just happy. This is a personal thing now that I saw The Rock again um, in the ring. Me personally, growing up, The Rock was always my idol, was always someone I looked up to. He, and he, I've never, ever met him, but my dream would be to, to shake his hand or do something. But the lowest of lows in my life during my time, I would watch WWE and The Rock would always give me a purpose to something. No matter if he was a heel, babyface, anything like that, The Rock was that. So last night, just to see him come back to the business that I love, wrestling and WWE, and to, to do it in a, in a fashion that was brilliant to watch, that it was amazing to see. And I think tonight, but the, the, the one thing I will change from that is I think there's a rock bottom happening to Roman. And the only reason I say that that happened was because of the spear last night. I know it was accidental, but I just feel that there's something between The Rock and Roman during the match where something will happen. I don't know whether that will be all the Avengers have come out and assembled and they come down. Stone Cold has tried to take The Rock back, but The Rock has done something to Stone Cold. He's out. He goes back to the ring and then something happens. I don't know. But all I know is, is this is going to be the most chaotic and absolutely manic main event in WrestleMania history that I'm absolutely going to love. See, and I'm going to say I hope that they avoid the overbooking with that. too many people coming <laughs> out. We, <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, I said the words I hope for a reason because I don't have faith. That's my biggest problem. Uh, and they could do this very simply with something that Mark touched on there and I've been saying for a while. Now, you've already got this these rules that are making it seem impossible for Cody Rhodes to overcome the odds, especially to overcome the odds without, like you're saying, a mass amount of help from aging old timers coming out and saving the day as always. But what what if what if the arrogance of Roman Reigns finally gets to be too much for the tribal chief and his arrogance starts to go and really piss off hey, <laughs> um, starts to really piss off the rock, the final boss who's been sitting there and acknowledging the tribal chief and playing nice for quite some time. But let's, you know, let's take the writing on the wall, the Rock's arrogance and ego are equally as big or bigger than Roman Reigns' is, 
And once Roman gets to be a bit too much, all it's going to take is one rock bottom from the rock in the middle of the ring as he walks away, giving Cody the open window to finally get that title. Then you can have all your stars come out and throw Cody up on the shoulders as he wins the belt. Roman's left in dismay and the gears are turning for Roman Reigns versus the rock. I mean, I love the idea of Roman Reigns versus the rock, but WWE's been building another match, and, and can we have that one first? Can we please have Cody ver Cody versus Rocket at SummerSlam? <laughs> <laughs> or Saudi? Like, one of the two? Rock's dumb enough. He'll go to Saudi for money. Like, can we have that? I mean, because, my God, we've trampled on the tribal chief for the last, you know, six weeks for the final boss. Which, by the way, I'm okay with. I'm okay with the final boss being the, for the forefront of the story. But there has to be a payoff to it at some point. And it has to be a payoff with Cody at some point. But see, arguably, you can still have that matchup. You can have The Rock insert himself into that title picture, say that he's the one that gave Cody that title. He then gets the title shot, allowing the opportunity for the Tribal Chief to intervene, costing The Rock that title. There your match is set up for down the road, Roman versus The Rock. Meanwhile, Cody does not lose the belt in the meantime. It could go on to something else with somebody else. As a fantasy booking, can I dive in on this? Yes, of course. Please do. I love the idea of having all of the overbooking before the bell rings. So we open the match. We have Cody and Roman make their entrances. And then The Rock comes down and declares, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. The bloodline are going to be here. This person's a special guest referee. This person's a guest timekeeper. Then we have our Avengers Assemble moment. We have Kevin Owens. We have Sami Zayn. We have Randy Orton. We have all of those coming down, getting rid of the bloodline, standing guard. Meanwhile, in the ring, Roman is losing his mind and Cody is staring right at him. Doesn't care at all what's going on out the ring. Just staring at Roman. In the end, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It only takes about 20 minutes because if Roman's actually a threat, he doesn't last very long. Roman Reigns infamously lasts very, very long as long as he's on top. But anyway, so with this in mind, I can see that as it's one-on-one, -on -one, Cody picks up the win. Then the ring is cleared. Everyone lifts up Cody, succe uh, succeeds, celebrates, wanders off with him essentially on the shoulders. I'd love to see them trying to carry him over the ropes while still on the shoulders. There'd be a throw, maybe a throw into a moonsault. Who knows? It's wrestling. Wrestling's insane. And then as they walk him away, the rock comes down, hits that rock bottom, and essentially says, I beat him. Why couldn't you? Naturally, I would do the same follow-up, Bobby. I would go to SummerSlam, Cody Rhodes versus The Rock, and it turns out The Rock can't beat him on his own either. Roman gloats. Roman celebrates. Match at Mania. Yeah, I like it. There's a whole bunch of fun to be had tonight. Like, <laughs> I, I get that the overbooking stuff isn't for everybody, but... We've put up with this crap for three hundred for thirteen hundred days. Let's just let us have our fun. Let's just let us have our silly fun for one night. It's one like these are one matches per night where we get to have silly, crazy, dumb stuff. We can do it. There are Triple H has done a very good job of giving us a four hour WrestleMania because last night it was just over four hours, I believe, from the start of the show to the end of the show. That's fine. Like, remember 35 where we were talking it was like seven hours bell to bell for the actual wrestling? Like, we're getting four hours per night, which is a lot. I agree. But we're only getting six or seven matches on these four hours. Things are getting time again. Everything gets time nowadays when it comes to a pay-per-view. Nothing feels rushed other than sometimes the stories. But, like, the matches themselves get time to tell stories in the ring. Unless, of course, you're on WWE Speed. Which, by the way, I thoroughly enjoyed the first week of Speed. I just want to put it out because I don't know what other show I'm going to have the opportunity to do it. The sun has risen 35 feet before finish. <laughs> but, like, the, we, we deserve to have one night, well, one weekend of one match having absolute batshit crazy stuff that doesn't happen. Because WWE's done a very good job of keeping things more realistic lately under the Triple H umbrella. They don't have the crazy, stupid, overbooked stuff most of the time when it's under Triple H. He keeps things slightly more contained, other than the Bloodline story. And I think this is where we start to get to the seventh inning, as Paul Heyman once 
funnily said it was before last year's WrestleMania, was it? They said we're only in the third inning. I think we're finally in the seventh or eighth inning of this ball game with the rock finally being involved in everything else. And I think that by the end of, by the end of the mania next year, the tribal chief character will be gone because we heard from him, him himself at the hall of fame. When there's no wise man, there's no longer a tribal chief. And I think by this time next year, Paul Heyman is going to be working with somebody else, whether it be a Jade Cargill, whether it be a Carmelo Hayes, whether it be a Braun Breaker. And I say those three because they're the ones that he specifically picked out to mention during a Hall of Fame ceremony. One of those threes is getting is getting the the honor of working as a Paul Heyman guy, I believe, in the near future. Because I don't think he calls out names of people without really wanting to work with them specifically. So he told Triple H in that pro, in that speech, I believe, that these are the three that I want to work with. You take your pick. And I want it to be Braun Breaker. <clears throat> I think Braun Breaker, under the tutelage of Paul Heyman, is a version of Brock Lesnar that is special because it's Brock Lesnar as the next big thing, Brock Lesnar, more so than the beast that we got at the end. Mm. And I think that's where the fun of this happens is let's talk about what comes next for Paul going forward because that man said it himself he ain't done yet and, I, and i'm going to follow up on that and what you said as well was i think you're absolutely spot on but how do you because i think roman reigns also said as well that he wouldn't do it anymore but also the bloodline will also always continue there they, they will be a new chief I would say, of the bloodline. Because I feel like with this group, you can... It's like the sugar babes in the UK. They always take one person out, put another person in, and they still keep the same name the whole way through it. The what? It is, have you sugar never heard babe. of the sugar babes? Yeah, the sugar babes. Look them up. They, they, they had about seven different people in the same group. Oh. Um, good song. Um, <laughs> oh. Anyway, I was about to it's sing one then. It just popped into my head. Um... <laughs> but no, so for me, I think when Roman does leave, the, the bloodline will never go. I think this group will always continue. But then how do you create the new chief of the bloodline? That's the question. And I think at the end of the night, we've all gone with Cody Rhodes. And I, all I just hope for is that it's batshit crazy. Let Triple H just let loose for once with the absolute nostalgia acts, whatever you want to do, just for this one match, and let's all just enjoy it. But I want to say as well, I don't think The Rock gets the credit that I think he deserves. And I'm not saying that as like a fan for his, or doing that, but if you look at the promo work, what he's done since coming back, and the edginess that he's done to the product, and the way that he's gone after Cody Rhodes, and going after Mama Rhodes, and the Cody Crybabies and all of those type of things. What he added to this match is completely different to then getting part two of Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. It's completely different. And there's a new edge to this match. And this is what I'm very excited for. So if I can jump in at this point then. As regards the overbooking, I think we're all excited for it. We're all looking forward to getting more involved. Uh, and it comes to The Rock and his promos. They have been fantastic. He's added a lot more attention to the product just by being interesting. It's very different. It's very diverse. He added very little, in my opinion, to the actual match. And if anything, he made the match slower and a little more dull. That's what I thought from the match itself. There is a reason, as I can see Astrid saying, that The Rock pinned Cody. It's definitely coming up later. Don't worry, there's plenty more to come. But what I will say as regards Tribal Chief, it's already established how it happens. Tribal Chief matches now exist, and Solo Sokoa has been established. Now the question is, will it be Roman, The Rock, then Solo, or will it be Roman, then Solo? Very good question. And I'm sure we'll find that out very, very soon. Um, yeah, I have one last question I'm going to ask around the table here, guys, uh, about WrestleMania tonight, and then we will say our goodbyes. I want to know, do we expect any surprises or any reveals of any kind that could lead to 
potential news stories moving forward? Or is this going to be reserved for Raw and SmackDown this week? Tom, I'm going to go to you first on this one. Historically, Triple H is not big on random surprises and the return of older names, such as, for example, Goldberg, hence the issue there. If there is going to be a segment with, for example, John Cena and Steve Austin, I'd imagine it will be a, a backstage segment, a Hall of Fame segment, a opening and warming up the crowd segment rather than being involved in the main event. But we'll see how that plays out. Personally, I think there's more than enough people connected to Cody that they don't need to have so many surprises. But Triple H historically wants a story to be the surprise. Hence, for example, if you want a big surprise, how about Sami Zayn beating Gunter, guys? Huge. Mm. Huge. <laughs> it was huge. What, what are your thoughts, Mark? Any other big uh, Sami Zayn Intercontinental title-like surprises that we're going to see on the show tonight? I really hope not. Um, I really... No, I, I think the most surprising for me will be... We all know that the ending... Well, we don't know the ending. We... We hope that Cody Rhodes will go. That Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins match, for me, they're just, it could go one of three ways. And you just don't know which way WWE are going to go for. Are they going to get Drew to win for the cash in to happen? Will, will uh, Damian cash in during the match? Will he wait to the night after? Seth Rollins wins, but he's so banged up because he tried to help Cody Rhodes on Monday night on Raw, that the Raw after Mania, that the cash-in happened. We know the cash-in is going to happen. But how, when, and why? I think that's the story that I'm really looking forward to seeing um, and playing out going forward. But I'm just really excited. It's WrestleMania. It doesn't matter who's on the night. It's WrestleMania, and I absolutely love it. You bet. Ed, any surprises you're expecting to see tonight? I just no, not really. I think we're you know we've talked about everything um, that we can. Jacob fought too, you know, not showing up at GCW the other night while being advertised on the poster is the only potential hmm, that, laying out that, there. That wouldn't be the first time Jacob fought. I, I, I understand. <laughs> Jacob fought too. No showing a show is very surprise. I'm just saying, the the, the the happenstance that you know cousins happen to be in town and Jacob fought too randomly no shows a promotion. Might have something like, but I want to talk about something that's happened since we went on the air. The Slammies were on. Yes. While we were on the air. And thanks to the wonderful Ash Bazaar for pointing this out to me. Drew McIntyre won the award for Social Star of the Year. Well, but in friend. true Damian Priest fashion, Chelsea Green stole the Slammy for herself. <laughs> nice. Well played. Well played by Chelsea about. Green. Oh, so Chelsea Green's going to take that money in the bank briefcase and cash it in and win it for herself. And we can all agree on that. No, no, I just think that Drew <laughs> getting screwed. I just think it's funny that we're talking about Drew getting screwed and he just got screwed on uh, the internet here by Chelsea Green. Wait, everybody no, that's not to, how it's supposed to come Everybody out. wants to screw Drew. We've been over this. <laughs> it's a I screw mean, Drew type day. I mean, there was, where was it? Uh, yeah, he's a handsome fellow. He, he, he is, is a handsome fellow, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. He is very. I could have denied that. All right. Did we see the show going in that direction? No. Yeah, yeah pretty much. I, I think, yeah, I think, <laughs> I, you, you know me. That's the issue. <laughs> I do want to ask a question because Bobby's been asking all the questions here, and okay. I want to ask a question. Ooh. We did this last year because we did it before um, night two, and we're going to do it again. What was, it, what, what, is, what was everybody looking forward to coming into this WrestleMania this year? Bobby, we'll let you go first on something for once. Um, the main event business, clearly, uh, with The Rock, Cody, Rollins, Roman, add Drew into the picture. Just the storytelling around the main event picture in general, I think, made an intrigue about WrestleMania as a whole collectively this year than it has done in previous years for quite some time. That's what they used to rely on a lot of was that big business in their main events, and this big business has mattered in a very massive way there's no denying the international success that the rock is and that brings to the table when he decides to come back and bring that into the wwe that has really put some additional eyes on the prize i think it's going to get them uh you know a lot of more attention moving forward and what they do with it next will be the interesting part but in the meantime they nailed it in terms of the storytelling going around the main events and i'm very much looking forward to seeing how that main event pans out tonight mark it, it, there was two parts the main event exactly what bobby said and it was the ring versus sammy zane because i knew 
How'd that work out for you? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Um, because I know if you put both of those gentlemen inside of a of a ring, it's going to be an amazing match, no matter what. Because both of them are workhorses, they do brilliantly well. The ending was terrible and should never should be erased from existence. Um <laughs> From wrestling, they should just give back the title because it's absolutely stupid. Um, but no, and I'm, re- I'm I think I'm really looking forward to tonight's uh, the the two, the world title and the the Universal WWE Championship, just to see how it goes. I think normally with WWE, you know the winner, you can un- you can sort of click of who's going to win and what's going to happen. But with these two, you have no clue. You can have your opinion, but it's not written in stone with either of them. So I'm very excited to be surprised and just looking forward to it. Mr. Collihue. So the thing that I was most excited for was seeing Rhea Ripley demolish Becky Lynch, which is how it's happened. And I'll, I'll say this, you guys will, nothing, none of this next part will surprise you because I know you guys have dropped into spoiler warning at times. Mm-hmm. And in, I believe it was June, I was given the entire story of damage control until WrestleMania which is why I've been able to sort of lay it out ahead of time carefully and piecemeal uh, over the course of several spoiler warnings. It's gotten me very invested in Bailey because it's a good story. And I'm a big Dakota Kai fan, so I'm excited to see more from her. That's certainly interesting to me. I also, I, I agree with Mark, the World Heavyweight Championship feels big. Seth's been distracted by it. CM Punk's now involved in it. I think we haven't really spoken about him yet, but he's going to have a big part to play. Drew McIntyre, Damian Priest. Everyone suddenly wants this championship. So we'll see how it goes. And I think Mark's absolutely right. It's good not to know. It's good to be surprised. Like when Sami Zayn beat Gunter. Oh, it's good to God. be surprised by things. Oh. And big results like right. that. No, I it's just not think surprising. That, that, Stupid. Because we do have matches where it feels like we know the result. Like when Gunter lost to Sami oh, Zayn, we felt we that. knew. We felt we knew what the result was, and we were surprised. And look how happy everyone is about it. Wrestling oh. is a wonderful thing, and oh. WrestleMania gives us huge WrestleMania moments. Like when Gunter lost the Intercontinental oh, the Championship to Sami Zayn. Yep, and at that moment, us Canadians stood all around our households, going, "Oh, Canada!" You know, our home native language. language. <laughs> and that's the only lyrics we know from our own national anthem, by the way. The rest we just hum. Tom, also, I know you. You said you just wanted to have fun with it. What did you think of Stand and Deliver yesterday? I well, you enjoyed watched it. it. Yeah, I really enjoyed the triple threat match. I was very impressed by all people involved there. I really struggled with knowing any of the women in the six-woman tag match because I don't watch NXT regularly. But thankfully, the heels all came out color-coded to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So the one with the arm injury was Donatello. That was really helpful. JC Jane, a name I knew. She was Raphael. And then there was Leonardo and Michelangelo, who I still don't know the names of. But one of them was tall. That's all I've got. Um, Outside of that, I didn't really love the final three matches. Mm -hmm. I thought Roxanne versus uh, Lyra was a bit stilted, a bit slow, a bit focused on certain body parts. I know that ring psychology is important, but it's also not that exciting. Um, the the championship match, Tony D'Angelo has never really done it for me, and this did not help that in any way, shape, or form. Main event was too short. The tempo was great. The match was great. Where's the rest of it? So I enjoyed the first two matches. I thought they were magnificent. Wendell Hill from, uh, for me from that. Basically, right. what we said then. I was just saying, it's basically what we talked about. It's basically what we said when we talked about it. Oh, you about. mentioned the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles then? No, no, we, no, we definitely then. didn't mention that. We did, that not, we did not mention I did not notice that. I was At that point, I was still ranting about the AHL. Yeah. I thought you might be. Yeah, not a fan, yeah. I am. <laughs> um, he is now. He is now. Slowly, I'm, I'm slowly tolerating her more and more every week. We did a draft and I picked her and you were mad. <laughs> That's because <laughs> I wanted to bury her. I wanted the personal pleasure of burying her, like I'm doing on my GM mode. Bit weird, bro. <laughs> Anyways, um, I do that to Sasha Banks on my universe mode. <laughs> Anyways, moving up, moving on from Sasha Banks. Um, yeah, I think this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun night of wrestling. I'm looking forward to, you know, like Tom said, I'm looking forward to the main event. Yes, but I'm looking forward to see what Bailey does because I think she's been. 
she's been the biggest victim out of all of the superstars coming back. That's kind of put her in a bad position. And I feel for her on that one because it just, it, it just feels a bit unfair as to how some of these women who have come out of winning the rumble have felt, you know, Charlotte going ahead and making a big deal about challenging Rhea Ripley for the NXT championship. Uh, Bianca Belair getting that main event with Sasha Banks after winning her Royal Rumble. Becky being the big star after stealing a Rumble win because of a Rumble that she wasn't even in, you know, but she forced her way in by telling Fit Finley that, you know, she's on the TKO board and, and he didn't know what she was talking about, so he let her in um, when she obviously shouldn't have been. It's just, you know... It's just nice. It's nice. It'll be nice to hopefully see Bailey get a moment because they've really done a disservice to her through this story. While the story's been the best out of most of these matches, it just feels like they've done a disservice to giving her the time to tell it on television. Mm -hmm. Very fair. Well, there's only one way to find out how right we might be or how wrong we might be, and that's to watch WrestleMania tonight and uh, let us know in the comments section just uh, how much mud you want to sling at us for our predictions here today. But uh, in the meantime and in between time, Tom, we're going to go over to you. Where What you got coming up and uh, where can the people find you? You can, of course, find me on my YouTube channel, which is at Tom Collihue. We're also on Twitter, now X at Collihue, which is C-O-L-O-H-U-E. We will be covering WrestleMania live, so if you want to sling some mud, please do it in my channel. Fill the damn chat with the mud that you sling, because you will guarantee me plenty more people, and trolls are very welcome. Perfect. Mark, how about yourself? Where can the people find you? What you get coming up? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, I'm doing a WWE 2K24 Predictions uh, for the whole of the WrestleMania card, which we've been coming out this week, we've got the carry on of Unleashed, which is my rise from WWE 2K24 on the uh, WWE uh, 2K24 channel as well. And then I will be back later today on here with good old Ed back here again with me, you handsome fella. If I make it, um, if I make it, yeah. <laughs> I'll be back here later on uh, to do the post show. So yeah, that's me. YouTube. That's you. That's you. Ed, how about yourself? What's up? Later tonight, I'm very, very happy to be joined by Bobby Munson. I'm very happy to meet for the first time and be joined by Stephanie Hardy of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. Mark will be there as well. Our our tutorial boss will be here as well. So we can go ahead and you know have that going on. Uh, next week, back to taking over, back to our normal schedule. Tuesday night, we'll be doing a taking over. And I'm very excited for next Wednesday. Uh, Marvel Talk returns again, but for the first time in a long time, we're not returning with an MC Rebound episode. We're going to be talking all things X-Men 97, the first five episodes. We're going to be doing a breakdown and a chat about what me and Andre's thoughts of the first uh, five episodes of the nostalgia kick that has been X-Men 97. And they've done a fantastic job making it feel like 1997 while also giving us graphics that are, you know, appropriate in 2024. Yeah, it's a phenomenal show. I'm looking forward to seeing your guys' thoughts on it, but uh, I've been enjoying it myself. There's my ticker down below. That's where you can reach me. I am Bobby Munson. Uh, you're going to be able to catch me again on Thursday night with my colleague, Mr. Papa Smokes. We're going to be talking about the blood sport show that happened on Thursday of this week on Ring Respect Radio this coming Thursday night. And uh, you can also catch us both on Prairie Pro Wrestling each and every Saturday afternoon as we release a brand new match from our vaults for you as we run the commentary over on that side of things. And then again, next Sunday, back to point of view here, we'll I'll probably be doing some gaming or watching some sort of wrestling or something with you people because I love y'all. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. We appreciate it. And we will see you later tonight when I am joined by Ed, by Mark, and by Stephanie Hardy to talk all things WrestleMania Night 2. For, for myself, Ed, Tom and Mark, thank you. Have a good rest of your day.